Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this video I will look at the server core interface for Windows Server 2016. By the end of this video you will understand what server core is, how to install server core and will understand the reasons for using it. So let's get started. First things first, what exactly is server core? Server Core was first introduced in Windows Server 2008 and has been included in every version of Windows Server released since. Server Core is essentially a choice of user interface. Server Core is only available as an install option on Windows Server 2016 Standard and Windows Server 2016 Data Center editions and is the only install option available in Microsoft Hyper-V Server 2016. When you first install Windows Server 2016 Standard or Data Center Edition, you are asked to choose your preferred interface. Seen here are the install options when booting from a Windows Server 2016 Data Center installation disk. Windows Server 2016 Standard, Windows Server 2016 Standard Desktop Experience, Windows Server 2016 Data Center and Windows Server 2016 Data Center Desktop Experience. It's worth noting at this point that if you boot from an installation disk for Windows Server 2016 Standard Edition, you will only receive the two Standard Edition options, not the Data Center options. Although not at all obvious, if you were to select either Windows Server 2016 Standard or Windows Server 2016 Data Center as your choice of interface, you'll receive what is called a Server Core interface. Whereas if you were to select either Windows Server 2016 Standard Desktop Experience or Windows Server 2016 Data Center Desktop Experience, you'll receive the Desktop Experience interface instead. This is all very well, but what exactly is the difference between these interface types? When you install Windows Server 2016 with a Server Core interface, you essentially receive a black screen with a command prompt window like the one seen here. With Server Core, if you log onto the server locally, all administration of the server is done via the command prompt and by using Windows PowerShell. There are virtually no graphical tools available. No desktop, no taskbar, no start menu and no server manager. To use these graphical tools, you'll have to install the Desktop Experience Interface instead. When you install the Desktop Experience Interface, you get the regular look and feel of a Windows Server and will receive a traditional desktop, start menu and file explorer. If you're brand new to the world of IT, it might seem like a no-brainer to select the Desktop Experience interface and you're probably asking why on earth would I choose to deploy a server with a Server Core interface? This is a good question and although administering Server Core can be a little more difficult, there are some good reasons for using it. The first is hardware resource conservation. Since Server Core eliminates most graphical elements of the operating system, it's less resource intensive and requires fewer resources to run. Graphical interfaces require more processor power and RAM memory to display and render graphics accordingly. With Server Core, since there are virtually no graphical elements, this essentially saves resources. Next is reduced disk space. Because of its heavily stripped down interface, Server Core requires less disk space than the Desktop Experience interface. Since much of the interface is absent in Server Core, the install files for these graphical elements are simply not installed. The end result is an operating system with a reduced install footprint. Next, installing Server Core means fewer updates. According to Microsoft, the graphical interface of Windows Server 2016 is one of the most frequently patched features of the operating system. Running Server Core means fewer graphical elements. Fewer graphical elements means fewer updates, and fewer updates means fewer server restarts and less downtime. And finally, Server Core has a reduced attack surface. Since the operating system is heavily stripped down in Server Core, there's effectively less software running on the server. 
The less software running on the server, the fewer security holes there are for an attacker to exploit. Or, to put it another way, by choosing a server core, you're effectively making your server more secure. One very important point I'd like to make is that when installing Windows Server 2016, you should choose your preferred interface very carefully. With Windows Server 2016, it's not possible to change your server's interface later on. That is, you cannot take a server running server core and change its interface to a desktop experience interface. Likewise, a server with a desktop experience interface cannot be changed to a server core interface. With Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2, it was possible for the administrator to change the interface if they really wanted to. However, with Windows Server 2016, this ability has been dropped. With Windows Server 2016, the only way to change the interface for your server is to completely reinstall the operating system. Now that we know what server core is and the reason for using it, I'll now change over to my bare metal server so that I can demonstrate how to install Windows Server 2016 in server core mode. On this server, I've inserted and have already booted to my Windows Server 2016 Data Center Edition installation media. Having booted into the media, I'm now being presented with the Windows Server 2016 installation wizard. If you've not yet seen our previous video, Performing a Clean Installation of Windows Server 2016, then I highly recommend that you do, since I cover each step to the installation wizard in a lot of detail. Rather than cover each step in detail a second time, I will skip through the first set of screens to the wizard, until I reach the screen Select the operating system you want to install. From here I have four options to choose from, two for the standard edition and two for the data center edition. If I were to select either Windows Server 2016 Standard or Windows Server 2016 Data Center, I will receive that edition of the operating system with a server core interface. Alternatively, if I were to select either of the desktop experience interfaces, I'd receive a full graphical interface complete with desktop, taskbar, start menu, etc. In this case, I will select the Windows Server 2016 Data Center option, will accept Microsoft's licensing terms, and will next my way to the end of the wizard. Windows Server 2016 Data Center Edition is now installing. Although server core installations are typically faster than desktop experience installations, they can still take a number of minutes to complete. So I'll fast forward to the end of this process so we don't have to wait. The installation is now complete and the server has rebooted. Notice though that when the server comes back up from its reboot, things don't quite look the same here. The interface is nowhere near as flashy or colourful. All we have is a black screen with a command prompt window from which to administer our server. What you're looking at now is the server core interface. Understand, despite the simplicity of the interface, this is still, believe it or not, a fully-fledged copy of Windows Server 2016 Data Center. Just because the interface is a server core interface doesn't make it any less of a server. As with any fresh installs of Windows Server 2016, the first order of business is to change the password for the built-in administrator account. From here, we'll essentially get two choices, either OK or Cancel. If I highlight the OK option and press Enter, notice that I'm now being asked to provide a new password and to confirm the password, which I will now do. Having chosen a new password, I will then press Enter. When the password is changed, I'll be notified that your password has been changed. So I'll acknowledge this prompt by highlighting OK and will press Enter again. At this point, Windows will start logging me onto the server with the administrator user account. And just like a server running the desktop experience interface, we'll create a user profile for the account, albeit an extremely basic one. This should only take a matter of seconds to complete. 
Once logged on, as you can see, the only tool I have to manage and administer this server is the command prompt. That's it for installing Windows Server 2016 in Server Core mode. In the next video I'll demonstrate how to use the Server Core interface to configure some of the basic server settings. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. For more videos from Tech Tips from Will, check out our YouTube page. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Many thanks and we'll see you on the next Tech Tip.